And Seton Hall off and running. Danny Hurley to the big guy, Luther Wright, the Gordon Winchester, and the 42-34 lead. ESPN's NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Canoe, the man's cologne by Dana. Canoe, canoe. Seton Hall with an eight-point lead over Rutgers. Seton Hall 3-1, their only loss in the ACC Big East Challenge. Rutgers undefeated and looking to stay that way. Down by eight, plenty of work to do for Bob Wenzel's team. Right now, let's head back to Dave Sims and Bill Raftery at the rack. Gentlemen. Thank you, John. Seton Hall enjoying an eight-point lead here at Rutgers at the Scataway, New Jersey. Dave Sims and Bill Raftery with you. And uh, so far, the turnovers have been a big story regarding Rutgers. They've turned it over a bunch of times, 12 times in this game. And, and Seton Hall, nine. And, and the thing about Seton Hall is they've started to utilize the turnovers and their half-court defense into fast breaks. And Danny Hurley has stepped up a little bit. The yeah. ability to convert, get an opportunity. This time, they just handle the pressure. You see him peaking, and all of a sudden, the freezing ability and the switch to the right hand but when the break wasn't there Dave they were forced to play some inside basketball and we mentioned the pounding Gordon gets a hold of it and eventually gets the goal but the soft touch the easy shot the opportunity to complete indeed with the left hand that was uh, Jerry Walker and Winchester with the follow Winchester has been outstanding today 14 points six for eight shooting Here's a look at our first half stats, and Bill, there you go, with 79% at the free throw line. The rebounding edge a little bit to Seton Hall. Turnovers, as we mentioned, Rutgers would love to reduce that number. Fast break points, this is significant, 15-7 to 7 for Seton Hall, and we talked about Rutgers being the team that would want to get out and play racehorse basketball. Well, the organized break of Seton Hall, whereas on occasion, they've been reckless Rutgers with the basketball. Gordon Winchester has been more than solid 14 points Hurley's done a great job off the bench four players with five points meanwhile for Rutgers Smith with seven but uh, not a lot of it late though and and some key people not contributing you notice worthy down there rich and lumpkins they're not doing too well they're a combined two for 11 all right you're, you're Bob Wenzel halftime what are you what are you telling your boss up here well I think the beginning of the half as in any game is essential. They have not been able to get much out of the press, at least with the rapidity desired. I mentioned the half-court ability, and they haven't gone to it where they really trap you at the timeline using the sideline, and I think shot selection. They've got to get some oh. inside baskets. Shot selection is so important. Interesting what you talk about the turnovers. This Rutgers ball club forced 30 turnovers in this building against UNLV last Saturday. Tark didn't do that all season last year, did right. they? Well, thanks to Haynes. Well, this building has an impact, but Seton Hall has diffused it, particularly with the smaller lineup. The hair back in, Chris out. Here we go. Mark Redden, who's going against early, got the weave. Worthy. Here's Mike Jones. Man up at the top is Chuck Wyler. This is a patient situation for Rutgers. Wow. Almost. But Worthy will go. Rotation buys a three. 42-37, Seton Hall over Rutgers. Here comes the trap. Worthy shooting two for five from the field. We're just underway. Second half. Winchester they got what they said. wanted. Yes, indeed. And what, just what you were talking about on the sideline, too. Uh, they're pretty good at analyzing what you do. I noticed in the couple of games that I've seen and the practice, uh, they'll force people into situations. That time at half court. Rutgers trying to get this crowd back in the game. First minute of the second half, 42-37. Seton Hall over Rutgers. Got to drive to the goal, though, John. You can't continue. Timmy Higgins wants peace and quiet. Shot, shot clocks uh, not functioning, so they got to get that back in order. You know, double zero. I could have used Timmy when I came down here years ago when Tom Young was the coach to keep the crowd quiet. It didn't matter. They were usually up by 20 at halftime. Honestly, that's right. That's, uh, you're talking about 75 76 Rutgers. Sellers. Sellers. Eddie Jordan, Sellers, Dabney, Bailey, mm -hmm. Copeland, good ball club. I feel I made Tom Young a lot of money in his career. <laughs> a lot of wins. He's down at ODU. And they're yep. doing some television, too. The other thing, you played him in the other place on campus in New Brunswick at the barn, which held about 3,200. They set a record there against us. Tonight's crowd here, 8,966, the second largest crowd ever at the rack. I don't mean that kind of record. I mean point <laughs> yeah, score. <right. laughs> Do it with
with the bounce, guys. <laughs> there you to go. To the hole. Short. Well, and a column. That's all right, or though. the jar. Maybe a shovel pass to Rich Might would have been appropriate. Third foul on Jones. Number three. Leahy, John Leahy will inbound it. Danny Hurley's been outstanding in this game. Ryan Caver started off a little bit shaky and put on the bench, and Danny Hurley's come on and do a heck of a job. Perfect spot. Just what you're talking mm -hmm. about. That's a 2-2-1, two -two and they're trying to nurture you over the timeline, and then squeeze. Terry DeHair. I like your thoughts on DeHair in terms of how many shots he needs to take to be effective. Well, if he takes 10 and makes 8 or 9, they are some club. He doesn't need a lot. The North Carolina game, he had 23. Had nailed three, if I recall. The hair now three of seven. Rutgers down by seven to Seton Hall. You notice with Worthy, Winchester really up tight on him. He's the only one that fights over the top a, of the high pick. About a step farther out than he would like. Mm -hmm. The hair. And Winchester wide open in the far left corner. Uh, a good call to Walker. Weiler with a wise play as he got the attention of the official Jerry tried to clear the guy out and coach Carlissimo not telling him what's on the menu later either find no stretch <laughs> well two pretty fair young coaches aren't they indeed they know how to raise a program from the ashes because uh, PJ burned my playbook first and then things went his way Redden attacking the glass can't get it I think they give us something to Winchester. And a foul to Gordon Winchester. That's his third. That's significant. His third foul. And Gordon Winchester had a fantastic first half of 14 points and three rebounds. Well, what changes as he goes out? Mims gives you some bulk, some position offense, but doesn't give you the shutting out ability, particularly on a guy like Worthy. And they switch Walker to him. Now they switch Leahy as they get organized. So here's Steve Worthy to inbound. Gets it out to Red and Red to the nice. glass. Weiler left-handed new no. rebound. They're banging underneath, and they're going to call Rich for the foul or Weiler. I'm not sure, but that is better offense by Rutgers. That you're upset if you're a Rutgers fan that they didn't convert, but easier efforts, and of course you can tip them in there. First but foul on Rich. There's the pressure once again by Rutgers. The hair beats it fairly well this time. In watching him in practice, he's so confident in the game. I just think playing Carolina in the Meadowlands with a big crowd, up to 10, huh, Dave? First 10-point lead of the game, and the Rutgers crowd are coming to today's game. A lot of expectation. We go against the big, big East here, and Larry Lumbo calls a block. Mims tried to squeeze off a subtle little deal by Seton Hall where Leahy is the only guy fighting over the pick so that Worthy can't get free for the shot. Everybody else slides that high post pick. Second foul on Mims, first of this half. Here's Redden. And Rich was wide open. They didn't dump it down. They didn't see it. Mm. Shots. Harry the Temple coach with that big zone. Mims using the ball. Brooks with the finger roll. Looks like Uncle Uncle Wilby. You there. didn't like that kiss, did you? He's a work a holic. Seton Hall by 12 and really turning up the defensive pressure. Not only he slides that time. Nice back cut. Can't get it to him. They're doing a lot of perimeter dribbling. There's where you get some action. Good oh. ball. Wiley with the right hand. Puts it in. Gets it back to 10 points. Weiler with his first bucket of the game. Go to the goal. Intercepted. Bad pass by Hurley. Underneath. Worthy, he'll force it to the hole. Comes up empty. Much more long rebound. Mike Jones. And here comes Rutgers down by eight. Dave, they feed off the press. Look at the speed. Right in the press row. Anything looping. The crowd may want a little timeout action over here with Seton Hall. Ryan Caver comes in for Hurley. Bobby 
he winds up finding a little something to smile about with Jimmy Higgins. Uh, you press as they do with their floor speed. You're going to smile a lot. But anything up in the air, up for grabs, they cover the ground so quickly. See what Seton Hawkins did. Gave her to hair. The starting guards quite shaky early on. Nice. Jerry Walker rejected at the foul. And rightfully so. This should be a non-shooting. I think Smith got him before he went up. I agree with you. We'll push underneath. But that dip in has caused Rutgers. Now he got him on the way, too. Bump, and then the one later. But look at that dip in. They front and take it away. The hair with a great look to his old buddy, Jerry Walker. Jerry Walker goes to the line. One for two in the first half from the line. sight that is for Jerry Walker and any opponent coming in here to the racket. That is the loudest in. The band is there. The students are there, among other things. Now you think of this Atlantic 10. That isn't easy to make a, a free throw, but you've got Temple. You've got West Virginia, Massachusetts. This is not an easy league anymore. This league, and Rutgers. This league has come along nicely. Jerry Walker. That's seven points and four rebounds for Jerry Walker. It's Seton Hall. We'll be back right after this. Seton Hall up by 10 here at the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. Dave Sims and Bill Rafter with you. Good to be with you this evening as the Big East goes against the Atlantic 10. And the Atlantic 10, a lot to be happy about this early going. The Atlantic 10's non-conference record coming into tonight's game. An outstanding 33-9. And, and I forgot about Duquesne, too. John Carroll, uh, former assistant at PJ's. But years ago, I came down to Rutgers and the clock mount function and it's malfunctioning now and they added 10 seconds for every minute <laughs> so we were there it seemed for a week as Tom beat us I, I don't know maybe by 40 points easily and they're having the same problem here so I'm being haunted at the rack it happens it happens Coming up, some NFL action for you here on ESPN. Buffalo Bills against the Indianapolis Colts. Bills led by the rifle arm quarterback, Jim Kelly, and the best all-around back in football. No question about that. Thurman Thomas. Bills playing for the home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Indianapolis Colts, although it has been a long season and a tough season for the Colts, a win against their AFC East rivals, you bet it would make their season. It's coming up Sunday on ESPN. Dave, better shots will get you some offensive rebounds, and that's what Rutgers needs. Some second efforts after a good, strong bounce to the goal. That's exactly right. The penetration, what you talked about. They haven't gone baseline a lot. They've tried to slice through, but they, they've been sparing even in that. And it's in there. There you go. Worthy, yes! With the roll. Steve with a worthy effort. Thank you. Strong. I say former. Worthy now three for nine from the field. Makes it 51 43. It takes a while sometimes for things to sink in. Worthy relying on the jumper. Why not? They're hugging you, trying to fight over the top most often. The delivery and a chance for three. But worthy at 6 5 2 10. It's not like he's a mighty might, too. I mean, he can strong young mm -hmm. man. Worthy. He came into these perfect six for six from the line nails it to get it inside of 10 points down good, the good down to 37 the hair is wide open and jerry walker can't find him there's lay i say he, he wouldn't shoot now i would say to carolina he would have shot that beat it there wasn't anything get organized mims down in the low blocks caver there's the hair he's looking for a shot and a reset this frustrates a team like Rutgers. If you can retool, get more entry passes, they don't like to stay in the defensive stance. The hair, it looked long, it was long. Jerry Walker with the rebound, goes up strong, gets a foul. He works. He goes after, Weiler upset, but the ward off, the ability to seal the guy for the long rebound. Good anticipation by Walker. Second foul by Chuck Weiler. Jerry Walker, ever dependable, gets back to the line for Seton Hall. Jerry Walker got seven points. He's got five rebounds. That may be more important this evening. Leahy goes out for Winchester, who's back in the game. Interesting substitution. Stop worthy, right? 
Stop Worthy. You'll get a, get a good defense, your best mm -hmm. defensive player in the game. Mm -hmm. Walker makes the first. Gordon Winchester is the kind of guy, what do you figure, that the next level, if you will, the NBA going to look because of his defense. Uh, yeah, he will, but he's got to improve his offensive skills, and they have come along. But Rutgers right now, this building's going to be a tough place to come in. They have to give this crowd something to get into. Get a goal, get their press organized. They're weaved, you think their weave is too far out right now. I mean, it's, it's really a patient thrust. They're not trying to force the issue. Nice look. Worthy Smith. The dribble caused those Smith blue shirts to pinch. Smith knocks it down. We got another clock malfunction. They don't see it on the floor. Shot clock's out. Game clock scoreboard. Seton Hall continues to play. The hair. They'll reset. Larry Limbo sees it and will uh, take a timeout. See what's going on. And Bob Wenzel up. Of course, if you're PJ Carlissimo, you want that time to go while you're in control. Now, you figured that score out for me, Dave. I know you looked at a few during the course of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't take that language in school, though. 53 46, Seton Hall. What an improvement. We're looking at a running time with Tom Lucci and Jim O'Connell, two writers. And meanwhile, while they work on the clock, try to get things settled, we'll take a timeout, get right back to here, Piscataway, New Jersey, with Seton Hall up by seven. Thank you, John. We're back here in Piscataway, New Jersey, still experiencing some difficulties with the clock. One of the unfortunate things that'll happen during the course of a college basketball season, but the, the crowd here at the rack entertaining itself. Take a look at some of the stats here. Seton Hall shooting 50% from the field, 17 for 34. We also want to tell you about this boxing special coming up on ESPN this Friday. It's Norris against Castro. You won't want to miss this one. Terry Norris, the guy who retired Sugar Ray Leonard. Mm. Terry Norris is game. not a is not a bad fighter. Might be a tough night for Castro. Could be, could be. Rutgers is shooting 14 for 33 from the field. That's 42%. Not bad at the line, 12 for 15, 80%. Meanwhile, the Hall, 15 for 18 from the line. Another proposal, uh -huh. Bill. You handle that one. I'll take care of the honeymoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this reminds me a little bit of years ago, one of Dave Gavitt's first game as a color analyst, he came in with the Big East Network, and the power went out like five minutes right. before game time at Walsh Auditorium. And now, of course, they've redone the facility, everything works, and uh, you feel sorry for the athletic director and staff when this breaks down. Of course, Back. my AD, Richie Regan, normally was dining out <laughs> with his bride and children because he usually knew the result of my games there you beforehand. Go. Take a look at uh, some of the action from early in the game. He's worthy forcing the action, doing a good job too. He Just, is a kid that can turn it on and should look to go to the hole more. He's relying, as a lot of kids do, you like to bang down the long jumper and it kills you on occasion. Yeah, it's one of those things that looks good and it's easier to do. you got to work a little bit harder to put it on the floor and go through the defense, too. And your friends seem to like it. You right. Know, it's right. nice and easy. It's cool. The hard effort of dribbling between defenders and finding people is what he should be doing. And uh, Worthy had 19 versus UNLV, although he shot 7 for 21 Saturday here at the rack. Not a bad Christmas wish, top 10 mm -hmm. for Rutgers. And the uh, and it's a team Rutgers was picked 7th or 8th by the or 7th by the Atlantic 10 coaches in their preseason poll. And, you know, a lot of people have sort of forgotten about them. You look at Temple, you look at West Virginia. The kids didn't like that, uh, the Rutgers kids. The, when you think of the test of time, which is how you evaluate coaches, nobody expected much from Rutgers and Bobby Wenzel. And they have certainly given them a lot and, and will continue to. And on the other bench, Carlissimo. Uh, it's easy to fall back after a great year. You miss a kid or two, and all of a sudden your adrenaline isn't pumping, and you don't get some. As long as he doesn't shoot it, yeah, we're right. in good yeah, shape. I mean, right. and, and you've got a story about his ability, don't yeah, you? Or talking, lack of. We'll talk about that in a second. Terry DeHair, the, the uh, guy that, you know, the go-to guy for Seton Hall, struggled big time against North Carolina. Hey, big cheer. Clock's back. <laughs> yeah. The clock is back, but Terry DeHair had struggled so much. What did you? What do you think of his game to this point? 
Excellent. And the reason he's playing better, he went back to things he did as a freshman. You see the comparison the first game to the second. This one, his judgment is much better playing within himself. And he started shooting hours on Monday and Tuesday, much as he did as a freshman. And I also think the conversation with the coach helped. Well, I bet it was a long one, too. Back in to action here with 13.45 left in the ball game. It's Seton Hall leading Rutgers 53-46 to Hare with the bomb. Can't get it. And it will be Rutgers ball. Jerry Walker can't believe it. And a, and a nice little pull by Bobby Wenzel to the zone after all the stoppage took Seton Hall out of their sink. Gaver in the backcourt. He's guarding Redden. He's Jones. They run that three-man weave. And Winchester tough. Didn't buy the backcourt cut by Worthy. So he'll go over the top when he can and get some, help. Some matchup. Smith. Unusual rotation. What a follow by Jones. And it will be Rutgers ball. That one bim. Larry Limbo with the ball. What extension. Jones went up big. A lack of a body that time. Seen all normally capable of banging people and keeping them off the glass. Smith with the inbounds and back to live action. Jerry Walker, Mr. Reliable, steals the inbound. Little bump, little grind. Good anticipation to Hare. Nice give back. Good look, bad pass. Too harsh. Smith, that's intercepted to Hare. Good hustle getting back on the D. Seaton Hall up 53-46 with 12.50 left in the, in the ball game. Well, Caber and the Hare have to learn to play with one another. They have not played well early this season. Gamer started this game, struggled a little bit, yielded for Hurley and Chris, who really established Seton Hall in the first half. But with both of the shooting guard mentality, which makes it tough. One guy has to conceivably get the others involved, just like that. Barry Walker with the turn. Oh, yeah, go the other way. Good job by Darrell Smith. Heavy third foul by Jerry Walker. And that time, the 6'7", 235 cost some Hollywood theatrics as well, but that's what you have to do. Get the attention, no question the contact. They certainly got the attention. But from Seton Hall's end, good look by Caver. There was. Big Luther Wright replaces that man, Jerry Walker. Third on Jerry. And Danny Hurley comes in the game. He replaces Caver. Rutgers down by seven here at home. Second largest crowd ever at the rack, 8,000. 66. Seen all done a nice job not letting this dribble through the lane. Tough pass, tougher shot. Seaton Hall's Winchester there with the board. He'll take it himself. Good play because you take away the press. Was exactly the right because they were going to set that mm -hmm. up before they got to the midcourt line. Back to man to man. Not featuring Luther yet. Here's Terry DeHair. No bounce, but he'll go to the line for two. So they had run it to the left. Now the ball's reversed. He can do some damage. It's a feel that sometimes escapes you during the summer months, and a lot of times it's a good publicity. Don't forget, coming up after our game, Sports Center, we'll talk about the Mets Royals major trade. Barkley's back, and Mike Tyson loses yet another battle. All coming your way later on ESPN with Sports Center. Right after the game, fourth foul on Jones. He goes out of the game. Danelle Lumpkin comes in. Lumpkin, an unproductive first half, 0 for 4 from the field. And not a bad turn of events for Bobby because he gets a big body and also a post-up guy. He's not bad down on the box. The Harris first one is good. Looks like all of New Jersey is in the end zone. Honest to goodness. And where he read. Seton Hall from the line enjoying a great night, 16 for 19. The hair nails the second one. It's 55-46. Seton Hall over Rutgers. 11:40 left in the ball game. Rutgers three and zero. Seton Hall three and one. The number 12 team in the nation. Seton Hall will slough off the help on the dribbler. What a battle! Good help by Mims. And remain Rutgers ball, but Steve Worthy drawing a crowd right now with Rutgers trailing by 11. Let's go to John Saunders. We want to update you on that Mets trade with the Kansas City Royals. We have some names. They have not. Thank you, John. Good. It's 55 46. Yeah. Seton Hall over Rutgers here with 11 17 left. Jamal Phillips coming back into the game, as will Damon Santiago. Chuck Weiler will take the rest. 
Worthy will take a rest. I'm sorry, Dave. While we were away, Redden went to the goal and Hurley fouled him. They're finding a weakness against Seton Hall with the bounce. Good fake along the baseline. Challenges right. Santiago. He puts it up. No. Smith with the rebound. Big Luther right. Looks like the foul will be on Daryl Mims. Okay, two shot foul. Too many second chances, but that happens when the dribbler comes to you. You've got to address that. Face him, and all of a sudden, you don't get the body contact on your man. You're not dipping down, pushing, shoving, presenting that area to go after the basketball in a strong fashion. Third foul on Mims. Daryl Smith goes to the line. He's got nine points of the evening, on the evening. Daryl Smith averaging eight a game. 5.7 rebounds. One of the tri-captains along with Mike Jones and Creighton Drury. Second one's up and good. So 58-48. Seton Hall looking at a press and see how they handle it. They go one four, trying to come up the sideline and a little nickel dimer unnecessary. Daniel has not been in the game, would you say? There's one of those coaches' nightmares. I mean, Daniel wants to get off with a shot and everything. He's certainly not shy. He's got the good range, but he makes a defensive mistake like that. Lumpkin is 0 for 4, so he's going to look next time down, certainly the quick on offense. Jerry Walker is going to bring it up. Finds Winchester. He's got the hair all along, but good recovery by Rutgers. Backcourt, nice. big Luther with the left-handed hook. He'll go to the line on the follow-through. How about Hurley? Right on the money. Uh, something that uh, has been lacking early on. Acknowledging the cut and the post-up. Danny, the delivery on cue. Next year at this time, Luther catches and hammers it down. Well, rolls and finishes, you're right. Yeah. A little distant to do that at that point. Leahy comes in for Winchester. As is there wanting around college basketball, the crowd students getting on Luther just a little bit. It's not easy to be that big, that recruited, that well spoken of, but that's part of the growth. I remember a guy, Patrick Ewing, coming into the Big East, took the heat all over. Sure did. And by, uh, I'd say the second or third time they played those, they didn't matter at all. Redden goes out. Where are they back in the game? Here's Luther right again. 33% on the season from the line. Great right two. Great stroke. Tom Sullivan, Seton Hall assistant coach, said, hey, NBA star, no question about it. But I told Sully that this summer. <laughs> you do anything well, for a pop. Well, right? no, those guys did the recruiting. They knew it coming what, in. They're the partner? ones that, and in the world practice. Oh, is that deep? You got nothing but a good follow That's by Jamal Phillips. That's the difficulty. As a defender, you don't know where that ball is going to bounce. Ooh. That would have built a condo easily. <laughs> Several. 56-50. Here comes Rutgers. Here comes the crowd. The hair in trouble. There's a loose ball. Who's got it? It was definitely kicked out of bounds. It'll remain Seton Hall ball. Unintentional kick, but that's what they say. Bobby, a saver by coaches. DJ all over Terry DeHair getting him back in the game. Oh, they take away the post pass. They'll trap on the smaller Danny Hurley. His vision taken off then. He's mad at DeHair because he looped it up for grabs. Danny Hurley going against the press. Mims. Hurley will attack. Gets into the paint. Short. Rebound. Worthy. 56-50 with coming up on 10 minutes left and a turnover for Rutgers. That is the 16th turnover for the Scarlet Knights. Speed kills. And it also hurts your judgment. They didn't yeah. make nice shape. Down six. Down six. You start to feel it. Crowd mm. coming back. Well, new team as well. Start all over with the press. Winchester came back into the game for Seton Hall. Boy, they got him locked nice up. Nice job. Arrow going to Seton Hall. They used so, the sideline well. Pirates get a break there. Do you like the uh, older new possession or do you like the old? Uh, oh, yeah, I like it. Right? I mean, it speeds up play a little bit. The Wizard of Westwood responsible for that. I never get upset at rules you have to live with. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to listen to us anyhow. <laughs> Here's Seton Hall, De hair in control against Santiago. Uh, at this point, they usually like to go inside. Well, very physical, letting them play out front. 
Rutgers doing a nice job taking Seton Hall out of what they like to dip in the screen downs. Hurley forces, goes up, gets the roll around the rim. Danny Hurley, 58-50. Danny Hurley's got 10. They get even goal. They pull the string on that last one, and that's the moxie that he possesses. Santiago to Lumpkin. Lumpkin still hasn't bought a shot yet. Wow. That one's a sale. 58-52, one for six for Lumpkin. He's the kind of guy that we can light three up. late, right? Quickly. And Bobby's philosophy is let him take it. Look at this Wayne great. Wayne Chester can't get it. Jerry Walker, he'll go up strong, banks it home. Great use of the feet. But that philosophy of Rutgers, guys can get you going a little bit because you've had the free reign all evening. Oh, Danny Hurley just got wiped out on a pick. Lumpkin for three. another turnover. The hair looking to quiet things down. Early challenging. They call the walk. And on the noise meter, we're pushing nine, going to 11. Turnover starting them out. Seton Hall's got 15. Rutgers with 16. Rutgers worthy. Yes, and it makes it a three-point game. You know what you need here. Timeout, Seton Hall. 8.20 left in the ball game. It's Seton Hall up by three. Here come the Scarlet Knights. Welcome back to the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. And the Rutgers Ball Club is back in at Lumpkin with the force that he makes. Some pretty good assistance. Forced it into a tough goal, but right now, the philosophy of Wenzel winning out. Take him when you feel it. Let's go after them. Put the ball in Mims and other big people's hands, like Walker, who threw that one up for grab, and, and they're was, making the mistakes. That's right. The big fellas, as you mentioned, have to make some decisions that maybe they generally would not have to make. You don't recruit them to make those decisions. <laughs> Especially this club, you want to get in and... Used the big bodies and everything. Bobby went to work in this one nicely. PJ Carlisimo told me he would like this game 60-70. He can almost forget about that one now. Here comes Mike Jones back into the game for Donnell Lumpkin. Bobby Wenzel, if you're Wenzel, you want this game 80s easily, right? Uh, he'll keep going and pushing the throttle. But you've got to think also, PJ, the two guards that played the best were Chris and Hurley. But the hair has stepped up this half. Gary Walker with an outstanding night. 11 points, misses that one. Ball loose, and here comes Rutgers. Steve Worthy. Settle it down a little bit, looking for a crack. He wanted everybody to get back so he could beat all of them. Nothing else, they get the opportunity. Jamal Phillips. It's 60-59, Seton Hall over Rutgers. Well, you're not going to diagram a lot of these plays. Just shoot it and go get it. Rutgers on a 9-2 run. Hair trying to settle things down. Look at the defense right up in everybody's face. Walker, maybe a force swish. That's the confidence level he has achieved early this year, but just enough to screen down series. And it goes back to what you're saying about how he's got the context, he can see a little bit better. You didn't see him take that shot last time. No. Rutgers, what a heave. Worthy, no lay here with the rebound. Well, they, they, they're they titillating. They get you excited. Woo! And then uh, the deep one can get you out of the business, too. Walker wants it. He feels it. Goes glass. Yeah. You notice nobody contested. Nobody fronted. Concentrate a lot on offense and on the press. If Seton Hall can go half court, they got a good opportunity. They can pound them slowly, go after it. 64-59, the Hall. 6.50 left in the ballgame. Worthy ducks under. No. De hair Loose ball. Santiago. Oh, nice play. Went nice. off of Santiago. Nice play by De hair Major Rutgers. League. Rutgers fans looking for the call the other way, but Terry clearly hit it off of Santiago, and they exchanged pats on the butt there. Respect. Respect. Yes, yeah, the guy got one up on you. Yeah. Big possession here for the hole up by five. 6.38 left. 
Rutgers has to pay attention to the sets. They've been getting it inside, and nobody's shaping up down there, huh? Good job by Winchester. And Hurley sees it. Sets and Hurley sees it. He's right. 66-59. So that quickly, we went from a one-point game to a seven-point game. And how about the easy shots the Hall has been getting because of recognition? Winchester, 7 for 10, and a concerned Bob Wenzel will huddle up and talk it over with 6.22 left here at the rack. We're back after this. Welcome back to the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. Dave Sims and Bill Raftery with you at Seton Hall. Terry DeHair has not been a factor tonight, Bill. But the rotation, the depth of the backcourt, I think the shots he's taken, the experience he has brought to the floor, and the first half, particularly Hurley and Chris Sound, and uh, shooting the ball pretty good helps them, and Rutgers, the judgment suspect, but that's their game. Yes, indeed, that's what you saw there. 5 for 16, Steve Worth, and Lumpkin back in, so they got some more offensive power, and on cue. Don't mark it down just yet, Terry DeHair, good rebound. Solid. He's been solid. For an off-court, averaging 3.5 rebounds per game, that's nice. Winchester up top. They are harassing much better. It's their inside D that has been suspect. So if they can get it down, if Seton Hall can get it down to Walker or Winchester in the low blocks, they're in good shape. Leahy actually playing the center spot. Look at the rub off. Good spin. Not a good shot, though. No. Up for grabs, Walker. Rutgers has got it. Down by 7, 66-59 with 5.36 left in the ballgame. Redden, nice out of trouble, and he's stripped. Seton Hall goes the other way. Hurley, tough to the hole, and he'll shoot two. Got to admire it, huh? Not afraid to stick that shit and say, give me your best shot. Big difference, uh, as I think you mentioned, as we talked about before the ball game. That's not the play he makes last week when they get blown oh, up no. by North Carolina. He lost his cool and his comfort zone, which can happen. You're brand new, stepping up in the big arena against the University of North Carolina club, well-schooled and disciplined. Hurley, what a game. Ten points, double the season average. Now five for six at the line. He reminds me, believe it or not, and I was too old. I just saw old tapes of Richie Regan and his pugnacious <laughs> style. The old all-star with the Rochester Royals and, and Coach Rich, Seton Hall. Rich comes in for that man. Mike Jones. You saw him sitting next to Eddie Joy. No ready before the game. He was shaking. <laughs> Worst part of the game for him. Seton Hall, eight straight points. Pirates lead it 68-59 with 5.15 left in the ballgame. Worthy forcing again. Goes against the double team. No. Rich. Good effort by Rutgers. Jerry Walker. Who else? Comes up with it. Throws an elbow. They call a jump ball. Wow. How do you get that? I love the way Rutgers attacked the glass, though. Seton Hall for one of the few times that they've been known over the years to stick it down. I just think it's the penetration has become the strong suit of Rutgers. And maybe early there was a hold, but not late. But sometimes the whip, you see it, then blow it. Well, you better be a man underneath there. <laughs> or have uh, your Blue Cross Blue Shield paid up in Indeed. full. Munkin wants it. That's why. 68-62. Lumpkin shooting 44% from three-point range coming into the game, and he creates a big foul here. The pass was fourth. so slow, he could have had it, but he reacted just a tad late. He knows it. Worthy and Lumpkin for Bob Wenzel's Rutgers Ball Club now combined seven for 24. And as you say, <laughs> Bill, Bob is going to have to live with that. Yeah, he will. The, the one thing that they have going particularly tonight, is their ability to create havoc for Seton Hall out by the timeline. Right. And, and with plenty of time left, you may see more of that. Where they comes in for Lumpkin. And now Lumpkin out of South Brunswick High School in New Jersey. Danny Hurley, what a star he's been tonight. Can't get the first one. As you know, his brother Bobby plays at Duke. Defending national champion. Second shot is good. 69-62 Seton Hall. 13 for Danny Hurley. 
That man for a guy averages five. He's shooting 42% from the field. To me, his strong suit is shooting. Nice back cut. Go shoot the goal, guys. Pretty. Phillips. Create. done. Jamal Phillips, 69-64. Another run by Rutgers. Phillips with 10. Leahy, so he can see over the top. Get it to the dangerous sideline. Now, nice cross court to DeHair. You got to get the angles. A three by DeHair. No, sir. Winchester contests, loses it out of bounds. It's Rutgers ball. The Knights down by five. Question that judgment on that shot. A little quick. You can get your stuff inside, then settle out. The hair a little quick with the trigger. The hair now one for five from three. Look for Worthy to force here. Danny Hurley's hurt. Redden. Jones with the rebound. The pump. He's got it. Danny Hurley's hurt. He'll stop play. He is really hurt. Not so sure it wasn't his own man on the weave. The Rutgers down by three as they attend to Danny Hurley. Hopefully he's not seriously hurt. And I think you're right. It might have been his own guy. Yeah, they got they got banged together on the weave. It may have been a leg by the dribbler as well. John Levitt, the trainer. Here you go. There's a little bump. He stumbled. There it is. Yeah, see, that's where he got hurt. His yeah. own guy, Winchester, with the leg. Ooh, the knee right yep. in the ribs. He's in good shape here. Trips. That's where he got hurt, though, when Winchester hit him right in, that, Ooh, that right in the rib left. area. Well, if you can hurt Barkley in the rib area, I didn't. Oh, I thought boy. he was indestructible. Boy, you got that right. Charles <laughs> weathered the storm, and uh, we'll be back, hopefully. Be back shortly. Yeah, yeah he's been out for some time. And they played uh, some good games, but had a bad streak, the Sixers, and got a couple last weekend, right? Portland, Portland and Chicago. Chicago this game. Stay tuned for Sports Center and Charles Barkley, the aforementioned big one, is back. Charles Barkley back. Mets and Royals with a major trade. Mike Tyson loses another battle. Those and other stories coming up on Sports Center right after our ball game. I want to remind you too that coming up on Saturday, an outstanding doubleheader. Connecticut tries to stop the Longhorn Stampede. They face Texas and then DePaul beats Kansas. Saturday night double feature starting at 7.30 Eastern live right here on ESPN. You know what P.J. has going if Hurley is unable to play, and there's still Kateri Dimolo, his head is off the floor. Pretty good-looking doubleheader coming up is that Darryl Christ has played. Yes. Has been in the game under the heat of the full-court press, but he's starting to nod his head. And, of course, Bobby Hurley Sr. to the left, and his wife and the mother certainly concerned Chris here. and Bobby. Easy drive for them from Jersey City, and... Danny's sitting up, so that's got to be the hardest feeling in the world for any parent when their son is down. Yes, indeed. <laughs> he's up, and uh, that's good news, but he's still holding his ribs. Right ribs, as you can see. But at this moment, it certainly looks doubtful. Who's that harder on, the mom or the dad? Though? Well, I think it's tougher on the mother because Bobby's been through it. But knowing Bobby, if he, if he found out right now that Danny was okay, he'd ignore it and say, okay, let's go. Get in there and get started again. But he did take a shot with that knee. And no charge timeout because they take him out of the game. And as as he, in. As soon as he catches his breath. Hurry up and get well. Is what right. I think that's what PJ and Governor are wishing right now. Father Mannion down there can say a quick prayer for him. There's Rutgers trying to disrupt once again. They've done a good job out top here. And what they also did is made the hair take that quick three. The last trip. 69-66 coming up on 345 left in the ball game. Seton Hall on top. Walker looking for a Walker's for the wide open. Got him. He recognizes things nicely. Nice oh, oh. pass. Oh, oh. Leahy. A little sleight of hand. Boy, mark that one down as a big play. Five points, Seton Hall advantage. 18 for Gordon Winchester. Gordon got to the basket. Well, Worthy got away with one there. Clock now the enemy of Rutgers down by five. Well, they can get him in a hurry and set that press up. Good shooter here. Redrich knocks that one down. Down three with three ten left. So what this offense does is spread Seton Hall. They can't help as much. 
Jerry Walker will settle things down. Boy, he's triple team. Perfect trap. Leahy, good recovery. Goes hard. Left hand scores it. Ooh. As he stepped up, the strength of Walker along the sideline to wrestle himself free. Beats the triple team. This is one heck of a play. And how about the use of the left? You mentioned it. You've got to be adept in all areas here, though. Shoulder wards off the defender. Gorgeous release. Most guys don't use the left, and that's why you should. <laughs> you should learn. Lumpkin is back into the ball game. Here's John Leahy going to the line. He's got 10 points. Make Rutgers, it 11. Rutgers has got to think now, I've got to get to the foul line. That means go to the goal, get a good shot, or step to the line, or both. And Seton Hall, a good defensive team, is not going to let the Scarlet Knights slice to the mm -hmm. hole uncontested. Redden with Worthy. Lumpkin is not shy, we know that. There's Phillips. Phillips not afraid in there. Spin. Nice. And deal. 74-70, Seton Hall. He's got some ability, high or low. Press. Phillips, four for five from the field. David, uh, settle things down. The clock on Seton Hall side right now, coming up on 218. They're going to run their delay, Dave. The key is when you come out of it and what you run. Look at this. Blow by. Yeah, Hanneman. So probably a good foul by Worthy because that was an easy two. Uh, they bring you up to the foul line, so your back guy has a long way to go if they turn the corner. Four fouls on Steve Worthy. Brian Caver will go to the line for Seton Hall. The Hall up by four. Uh, Freddie Gruninger, the AD here at Rutgers, he's got his football program going with Doug Graber. And now with basketball, the excitement is back in this building. And Bobby in charge of it. First time to the line is a good one for Brian Caver. Caver shooting 76% from the line. PJ, what, PJ, what's he want defensively here? He's telling make sure you get back is the thing he's telling the hair right now. I think he wants to make the Rutgers use some clock by their defense. Don't let him get the two. quick hitter. One of two, Hall up by five, coming up on the two-minute mark here at the rack. Crowd's going to get into this one right now. Crunch time. They're looking to free up Lumpkin that play. Lumpkin may be the guy. We talked about some of the shot selection, but he may be the guy they need. A travel. Good defense by Caver. Causes that travel by Worthy. Caver and Gordy. Winchester over there to pinch. And that was poor judgment by Steve Worthy. 18th turnover for Rutgers. And that's a killer down five of the minute 44 left. And the ball, unless it's good and shows early, will keep it for quite a while. Rutgers has won the last five. Make that the Hall. Seton Hall has won the last five straight against Rutgers. All right here, Dave, that you have to play the dribbler straight up and deny the back guy as he pops out. And they're not doing a good job of it. They're going to be able to run it down. Shot clock at 15 seconds. Gave her 101 on red. Oh, an extra step. He got caught. Turnover, Seton Hall. Stayed at home. Good defense. Ryan Gaver, big turnover. Let's see what the shot selection is for Rutgers here. Clock dying, coming up in a minute, down by five. Some back screens for Lumpkin, a little double, and the hair right at home. Redden, ooh. Lumpkin, looking for a little bit of room. Cut off nicely, under a minute to go. Rich, fades, oh. fires, scores. Leahy, a step late. It's a three-point ball game. Rutgers at home is down to Seton Hall. Coming up with 40 seconds left. Seton Hall, number 12 this week in the AP poll. Rutgers off to an outstanding 3-0 start, trying to make a big impact on the national scene. Clock inside, 25, the Hall up by three. Caver, loose ball. Rick Winchester comes up with it. They call. A jump ball. Let's see. It will be Seton Hall's ball. What, what a break for the Pirates. What a break. They brought their two-man situation into play. They are not spreading the floor. They're having difficulty with the dribble. Santiago comes in for Phillips. They're going to really turn up the heat on the defense. Daryl Smith in for Lumpkin. Timeout. Seton Hall's got two. Rutgers has one. And right here, they've got to go for a strong trap. Try and steal it and give it. Jamal 
Phillips gets back in. Rutgers 3-0, and, oh, and this very important play here for Seton Hall. Shot clock is off, 18 seconds left in the ballgame. Get it inside the lane. Yeah. It's Jersey Brown. Oh, Larry Lemo ball. caught it. The lane yes. caught. Larry caught it at the last minute. Lay he calling for the for the intentional foul. So does Peach. So does Peach. <laughs> oh goodness, uh, not a but bad effort by not Dana. At all. Uh, uh, it should be Daryl. Oh. He almost fought it. He did. He almost got away with it. Limbo over in our position, and you can see the grab. There it is. And right away they all want the intentional. Daryl Smith. I think when, from Larry's vantage point, when, when he cleared, when the, when, the, when the players cleared, he was able to see the grab at the last second. Traffic. Yeah. Leahy is three for three at the line. 77% shooter. Lumpkin back in the game, so you know he's going to be looking for the quick trigger mm -hmm. when Rutgers gets the ball back. Rich out of the game. Also coming back in is Redden, and he's in for Santiago. Timeout situation. Mm -hmm. Seton Hall two Rutgers has one and John Leahy looking into a sea of red and white streamers makes the first makes it a two trip game for Rutgers indeed 76-72 you're thinking as you said the quick hitter push score timeout Rutgers Leahy's got it so it's a 77. Oh, and elected Bob Wenzel wanted push it up, score, and then you see he's mad because the inexperience of his team showed right there. He did, and Bob Wenzel's got to sort things out. He's down by five with 17 seconds left here at the rack. Back for the finale after this. Dave Sims and Bill Raftery with you. Final 17 seconds from the rack in Piscataway, New Jersey. Number 12, Seton Hall, up by five on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And a little bit of a problem there. Miscommunication caused uh, Rutgers, caused Rutgers some bad uh, court position, if well, you will. Well, exactly. They lose the timeout. But uh, interestingly to me, Leahy of the last eight points by Seton Hall has scored five and thrown a perfect pass to Winchester. Rutgers is six for 18 from three. Ten seconds. Redden, no, and rebound. And be Seton Hall's ball, that'll do it. And who's there? Leahy. John Leahy. Good Stepped job. Stepped up big. Marty Aronoff on top of it with the numbers for us. And that will do it. Four, three, two, and one. Seton Hall wins it. 77-72. The Pirates three and one. Rutgers make that Seton Hall four and one. Rutgers is now three and one. Bill Rafter and Dave Sims. Hope you've enjoyed it. We have good night from Piscataway, New Jersey. Sports Center is next. ESPN's NCAA basketball is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. <laughs>